All right, here we are. It's now, it's now the three musketeers, right? We got Cairo Wonder Kid, Cairo Kid Man, and Cairo Man. Kind of makes up Cairo World, which is Cairo Domination. Take so, over. What's that? Take it over. Take it over the world. So today's topic, we got a couple topics, but the first one we're going to talk about which I think is great that our schools have, which is drug-free zones. Drug-free zones, absolutely. Which, yeah. which, which means what? Well, you'd think there would be no drugs. So, right? So this is this is kind of what's funny about this. Not free drugs. So your kids, how old, your kids aren't in school yet, right? No. Okay. Well, kindergarten. Okay. And your, well, you don't have kids, so your kids, your kids really aren't in school. <laughs> you got cats. Okay. You got cats. <laughs> cats. You got cats. So, but I, to school. I remember, I remember when Blake was in was in first grade. And we go to the Blair football game, and we went there for um, uh, the, the the pledge, you know, say no to drugs. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, the, dare, the dare, yeah, yeah, the dare, the dare program, pledge. which the Blair dropped because they didn't think it was valuable. But don't get me started on that whole political thing. <laughs> so, which is a great story, by the way. Yeah. Because if they uh, they dropped it, think it was valuable. Then the kids were doing pot in sixth and seventh grade, selling drugs in the school system in junior high, but it wasn't valuable. Which uh -huh. means. So, um, that's another funny story. Not that the kids are doing drugs, but what I told the school right. system. So, they didn't like it. Um, but it was funny, so we're at the school system. And this is what they, they tell Blake. Blake's going, why am I here? And I said, we're here to say, say no to drugs. And she goes, but I don't take drugs. I said, I know that, but you're here no to drugs. And she, I said, you know, it's kind of like there's, there's recreational drugs that I tried to explain to a mm -hmm. six-year-old mind. And then there's drugs that are prescribed by somebody. And I went... A legalized drug dealer and I said so basically we're wasting our time here because you do neither <laughs> so so with that in mind I'll let you guys roll with the uh, with the drug free zone what a massive contradiction that it is because how do you tell a kid what's a good drug and a bad drug exactly and it's posted everywhere and you see drug free zones on the schools on signs everywhere all surrounding within you know hundreds of yards within a school but then you know you see these pill popping drugs popping pulling up and these kids are lining up for their for their daily medication, and those are drugs. They're, those are killing our kids. Mm -hmm. It's all these things are not made for kids. They're never been tested. Never anything. They're not safe for adults or kids. Why why would we continue to put them? Do you know what I just I just thought of as you're saying that, and this would be interesting. There's that book out that um, uh, drugging our youth. Have you seen that new book that's out? That I, I got it Friday, I think, um, and I started reading it when I flew down to Texas. Do you know that it's not only against the law, let alone a violation of ethics, that if a child is in a Medicaid with a state assistance program to give a drug that is off-label, which means a drug that has not been tested for a child, it's against federal law to prescribe a drug off-label for a child in the, in the Medicaid program. Do you know in the last 10 years, 10 years, that number has gone up already for this 900%. I want that interest rate. I wonder why that is. I wonder why they do that. I don't know. I mean, um, money. What do you think? Imagine. What do you think? You have a set of words because we're hogging it. So we'll get no, it. that's exactly what it is. I mean, these kids are on these these drugs that are supposedly curing or helping them from whatever their issues are, and <clears throat> it's actually slowly tearing down their brain cells, literally, and just altering the way their brain thinks, the brain chemistry, and how their body um, perceives and, and makes sense of the world. What's interesting in the same book that I'm reading, which you guys ought to read, uh, homework, is it talks about how when we start these trick these kids out on psychotropic drugs, the manufacturers know they quoted them saying them in there, and the quotes are in there, how they know it's going to cause them to need more drugs down the road. Mm -hmm. But yet, our government, the genius is in charge, two words, two biggest oxymorons are government intelligence. <laughs> so <laughs> continue to say that it's okay. And it's it's the best way to describe that is BS. So that's PG. So with that, Dr. Matt's got so, a cool story. I got a story for you guys. So had a uh, patient came in uh, last week and he shared with me what happened to a family friend of his. That uh, his wife was in a car accident about three years ago and she was in a lot of pain after the accident and everything. Never saw a chiropractor, I say that right now. And she went to her medical doctor, and she was given the trifecta of drugs, which we've covered before. We need to do another one of those. Yeah. Uh, uh, next couple of weeks, we need to put one. Yeah, so, we need to put together. So she started on all these drugs, and the pain continued. So they upped the dosage, pain continued. They upped the dosage, pain continued. Yeah, that's smart, isn't it? Oh, well, I know. Uh -huh. I figure, you know, if this isn't good enough, make more so it covers it up better. So that way yeah. she continues, but anyway. 
Don't cover up the symptoms, take care of the cause, subluxation, you get that. But I'm, I'm not numbing you. So let's just numb the crap out of you just yeah. a little bit more. And what the heck? Morons. <laughs> and destroys liver kit. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, pathetic. So after years and years of taking the, these pain medications that they had to go to uh, cortisone shots because the pain was so bad, she had to take cortisone shots and pain pills. And last Wednesday... Doesn't the allopathetics have an oath, though? Doctor, do no harm? It should be first line. Okay, I thought so. Anyway. Last Wednesday, she went in and she had a regular cortisone shot. As opposed to your regular? <laughs> and within Sorry. 30 minutes, she was in the hospital paralyzed. Oh, but it wasn't linked to the cortisone, was it? No. No, not at all. Mm -mm. Uh, spontaneous disrecovery? Is that what yeah. they... What, so, just curious, what did they... What did, what did the... the, the Whatever the, the legal drug dealer in charge, what was his rationale? Oh, I think maybe she had a, a blood clot or a stroke or... Oh, it has not, that has nothing to do with cortisone either, right? Uh, no. no, so... No. And um, she laid in bed for three days, couldn't That's... feel her legs, couldn't feel her arms, couldn't feel her stomach. And she had small little motions and movement in her arms and hands. How is she now? And she's still... She's at home, but she's in bed because she has very little motion, any little control. Lost control over bowels. I mean, this is significant. How old is she? Fifty-three. And she's pain medication, pain medication, cortisone, hospital. And this is the this exact is system. Yeah, that we just continue to pay into. System has to change. Has to change now. So, so with that, you want to close the shift on anything? We have to have a closing thought. What's let's let's hit let's hit them together, right? One, two, three. You want to close it? <laughs> What's the definition of insanity? Oh. The, the, the allopathic model. There you go. <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. The same thing happens, guys. So this is week number 84 since we missed it in the beginning. So you guys, got anything else? Fired up? There's the Ready? way. See you guys next